It's the CES meeting on Wednesday, January 24th of 2024. Uh, we have two topics on the agenda, uh, both with Carity. Uh, welcome, Carity. Uh, my understanding is that Igalia and, uh, has made some progress on the Shadow Realm proposal, and uh, in particular to what to expose to, what of the web APIs to expose. And we wanted to discuss that for a little bit, and also trusted types, if time permits. You're muted, Carity. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Let me share the link. Let me find it. Uh, I didn't have it at hand. Um, that is the link under Shadow Realm. Is a pull request? Okay. Hold on, sorry. Hey, Matthew, you have it at hand? Please share, because I'm trying to find it here. Which issue do you want? The, the one that, that Leo shared uh, a couple of days ago with the list of globals. Yeah. Um... Uh, well, apparently, I need a minute as well. Okay, I think I found it. Okay, is issue uh, 393. Okay, I'll uh, I'll share my screen. Okay, perfect. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, so I think the one of the issues that we have with the stage three uh, to stage two, the motion was that we we're not a clear picture for implementers. What kind of API do we need on the shadow realm? Um, the Igalia Fox has been working on this for quite some time now, a few months. And this is the, the current proposal as it stands. Um, where we're listing all the APIs that are in the in the web specs and trying to define whether or not they should be in the in the shadow realm, and uh, we go one by one with the different links to pull requests and so on. So there were some questions about whether or not some of these APIs should be inside the shadow realm, and some of the APIs should not be in the shadow realm. And I, I believe this group can help with that. I don't know if we want to go over some of the comments or some of the specific items. It's, it's, it's probably hard to do it in one meeting, but um, I think from Matthew, there was a specific question about uh, IO, specific about fetch, uh, whether or not we want to have fetch inside the shadow realm. This is a conversation that we have multiple times. And I feel that every time that we have the conversation, we choose something different. Uh, so we need to make a final call on that and saying this is our proposal. And then we can hear from implementers if they're saying no to that or what, or what have you, we'll, we'll see. But I think for me, the most important aspect of it is that we have a list of all APIs, which ones are in, which ones are out, and some details about why they are out or in. Um, and that helps people to build a meta model of what APIs they can find inside a shadow realm. So I think that's the, the gist of it. Uh, uh, so yeah. so. That's what you will see in this uh, in this issue. Now, I do not think that we have to resolve all the details there in order to get to stage three again, because the the ask was we should have a, some definitions, and then obviously in the stage three we will decide what to do with that or whatever. And I guess I'm muted. All right. Um, sorry, uh, misclicking. Um, okay, so as if, I mean, I, I read through this, like all the ones that are decided exposed, it's fine. Um,
So the one reading, like at first I read the one not exposed in worker, exposed in worker but not exposed in shadow realm, and it seemed like the I read it as like, oh, these are the justifications why we will not expose these APIs in shadow realm. And I am a little bit worried that uh, this is giving the wrong message. Uh, and if it is a choice like this, these are the one like we think we can live without for now, I'm more OK with. But uh, I don't want to rule them out entirely. And all those are, uh, and, and more in general, like all the more complex APIs I'm worried about excluding all the more complex APIs that leave features out of Shadow Realms, uh, in particular like IO and Fetch. Um, the I, I understand what our use cases for Shadow Realm are, and that we don't care about having IO in there. Uh, I am worried that uh, if we limit it and we don't provide those APIs, then we're leaving features out. Uh, that and, and that we would prevent other uses and prevent adoption of uh, prevent adoption of the shadow realm feature in by by other users. Uh, one of those might be test runners, uh, which may not want to like rebuild a uh, build a membrane to to proxy uh, those features to the their main to the main realm. Um, and especially because complex API like fetch, being building mem membrane for fetch is 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 onerous. It's 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 you have to basically build a full membrane. Yeah, um, yeah. So I I did ask them to provide a comparison with workers because that has been a recurrent ask from implementers. Okay, what what are the API? What are the APIs? And when we settle on modifying the global, so has a proto chain, um, very similar to workers, uh, in order to make the event target and so on. Um, there was also always the question of okay, what's the difference between these and a worker? And, and because of that, I asked like Igali have kind of provided a, a a list of things that are in a worker but are not in a in in a shadow realm. And similarly. If if we were to allow them to create workers from within the shadow realm, which is I think something that someone else asked, I don't know if it was you or someone else, uh, then then there's no point on trying to restrict anything that is in a worker from within the shadow realm because you can spin up a a worker and use it there. It's just more difficult because now you have to go through the post message uh, uh, protocol, which is hard. Um, but in general, it seems to me that the implementers has uh, have been looking at this from the perspective of the the this seems a lot like a worker, at least the places where they differentiate between the main window and a worker. Um, this is kind of the way they look at it. So I wanted to add some details to it. Yeah. I I think the first thing I want us to be in agreement is that there, if everything in the realm is configurable and doesn't have exotic behavior, we don't care about what APIs are in the realm or not. Yeah, I think we're in agreement on that. We don't, we don't, we, you don't care, I don't care um, in terms of, of practicalities, but we do care from the perspective of the feature to be um, available for developers and to gain right. traction and be useful and so on. Um, and I think we all agree that like a worker, uh, there is no there is no documents access in uh, in the shadow realm. Right, and that is mostly just because well, I would say that is all only because the two object graph are separate. So if you're gonna get access to an object from the main window, like a DOM, then how do you give access to that without leaking well, objects to the other one? I mean, uh, Chrome does it with uh, content scripts. Content, content scripts have access to the DOM, and it is an entirely different isolated realm. 
so I, I know engines are able to represent the same DOM with two separate isolated graphs. I still don't believe I still don't believe we should give full access to the DOM in the Shadow Realm. Um, I, I don't know. That seems the, the the main the main reason that I see is that the DOM APIs don't support giving access to a sub part of the DOM. So I I am very suspicious that there is no use case for Shadow Realm uh, where you could have your own globals, but somehow uh mutate the same uh the same document whole document that that seems I, I i can't i don't understand what use case that would be maybe there's one yeah. i mean maybe a test I, run i think I, i'm in agreement there like from the very beginning we say no dom and we haven't seen any any actual use case for that so there was someone asking but it feels that we didn't really understood the the proposal and yeah, so my, I, I don't want to say like the APIs like fetch and so on have to be there uh, from, from the first uh, go, uh, especially if it would bring a lot of complexity uh, to the implementation uh, and if it would, uh, yeah, basically, if it would delay the proposal, I don't want to force more in uh, as, a, as a first step, and we can always add later. Um, there's a slight risk with adding later, which is if somebody builds uh, an isolation uh, mechanism based on Shadow Realm and assumes that those powers don't exist, uh, they, they basically have to do something like the, the session and have a, uh, have a allow list of things they, they, they want to allow in, uh, in their environment uh, and walk everything and remove everything that they don't know about. Because if we add anything later, then it technically can open uh, holes in the assumed security model that the, that those uh, users had. That, that's the yeah, main- Yeah, but I'll say, I'll say that, that's, that's, that that should be the start of school for anyone trying to do any kind of virtualization. It should be. <laughs> it should is a big- uh... <laughs> Yeah. It so if we go through if we go through the exercise of reading this um I think nine different bullet points from that middle section that you have in the spring, I think we can maybe um see where the point of contentions are from that list, because I think that's yeah. the list that matters the most. Um I'll I see Jess as a hand raised, so uh, yeah, uh, uh, just, uh, just rewinding a bit to the uh, use case. Uh, how about use cases like uh, uh, rendering a password field that has some amount of functionality, uh, uh, maybe checking the password for uh, entropy or something, but not allowing that to be accessible to the rest of the document? Is that a use of the DOM that that... We would want to support, and is that supported, or would that be supported with the design we have right now? I, I don't think so, because um, to be able to create the shadow realm, you have to trust that the main realm is not compromised in the first place, and is a place where you can uh, run, uh, where you have trusted source only. Uh, so it, it would be the opposite. It's it's literally, I, I think the. Anything trying to build something else where the main realm is trusted and the shadow realm is not is setting themselves up for failure. Uh, and at that point, the only use case I can imagine is somehow loading some untrusted code inside the shadow realm and wanting that uh, code to be able to access part of the DOM. But as we all know, you can walk up the DOM way too easily uh so there is no way to restrict access to a sub subgraph of the dom i mean unless you're providing your own interface like from scratch and tons of checks and everything but yeah. if you are if you are doing that at that point uh you can implement your own membrane across the shadow realm uh, callable binary. yeah yeah it makes sense um in in general what, what is the what is the principle that we that i should be thinking of uh, to decide whether something, so if I'm using this, what is the principle that I should be thinking of 
to know whether something would have been or not in, would not have been included in the shadow realm. Like at the moment when I scan through this list, it seems like a sort of an interesting, there's nothing I disagree with, but it seems like an interesting hodgepodge of things. I think that's uh, part of the exercise. Powerful APIs? Yeah. Right. I okay. think that's part of the exercise, right? Like to figure out where, where are the funny things? So what, what sounds funny to this group or, or beyond this group or why, why is that thing not there? Or why is this thing there? Um, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you can go one by one, browser states. Um, I assume this is things like local storage. Yeah, cookies, global storage, stuff like I mean, that. Cookies on documents. So thankfully, uh, that gets bundled in uh, uh, into the, the, the DOM uh, access. But Hey, I know this is like completely out of the spec and random, but could like there be a CSP policy like loading utility that would be kind of neat like if you're worried about like network access and message passing like i'm for like you know i want realms to have network access but then just like have an ability to regulate it even if it's clunky uh like you know just instantiating or activate policy like something like a method like that where you just pass it a csp policy and then that becomes enforced within the realm I thought about it having basic, basically a classification of what kind of API are available in the realm. Um, I I don't think any classification like that exists in in the web today. Uh, yeah, and, and to to clarify real quick, I, I mean to call this from the uh, parent realm, like you wouldn't call this inside the realm. I mean, it'd be cool if you had a method like that too. But I'm just thinking about like you have a reference to the realm from the you know parent frame or whatever, and you want to just like constrict its network address. There, there is something similar, which is the, the sandbox attributes of uh, of iframes. Uh, there is a somewhat of a classification there of what kind of API are, are allowed or not. Uh, I'm not sure if there's much appetite into uh, into applying that kind of uh, filtering mechanism for Shadow Realm. It's an interesting question. Yeah, no, Does I the think Safari they, implementation they, uh, already inherit that kind of stuff? If I were to like make a shadow realm from the context of an, a sandbox iframe, there were yeah. a couple of there were a couple of efforts around that in the past, a long time ago. There were first there was a proposal I think it was from Mark, where you have kind of a switch. Uh, they construct uh, is an option during construction of the realm, where you say I want. Uh, nothing there or I want this subset or I want this or something like that. And it was very yeah. generic. And um, that's where we were talking about um, undeniable versus uh, intrinsics versus some of the DOM APIs or, or, or global APIs on browsers so, 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 so. And then at some point, we also talk about some more granular um configuration when creating the shadow the, the realm at the time we call it realm where you will specify what list of global you want to have uh, so you kind of give like a this is the list of things that i would like to see there and the realm will be created with only those global uh properties and got it uh, uh, but both of these we, we we drop it i think in favor of saying hey the user can create abstractions for this on top of shadow realm because if you create a shadow realm and uh, I mean you extend the shadow realm class or whatever, and then you create a shadow realm and during construction you go and remove things that you don't want, uh, you should be able yeah. to do that. So hey. Library alpha. Just to short circuit this real quick. I I'm really only just asking about the current implementation behavior in Safari. I just want to know if network restrictions are inherited currently. If I were to instantiate a shadow realm, no options within a sandbox iframe. I mean, I can just do some tests later afterwards, but I'm just wondering if any of you guys knew off the top of your head, like, do, does it currently inherit network restrictions from parent frames? It's not, and are, it's not complete, I think. For example, I, I believe if you have strict execution, you can always uh, import, uh, dynamic import something. I, I meant like fundamentally, like is there any like network API that I can- Yeah, it's, directly it's, from inside it's, the, uh, it's, one's there, it's, one's there, 
Yeah, to answer that question, it shares the same settings object with the iframe that holds the shadow realm, so it will have the same capabilities. Got it. Thank you so much. That, that helps a lot. Yeah. Appreciate it. <clears throat> and then if, you, if you, we wanted to do something more like, a, oh, you're creating a shadow realm with new capabilities or specific capabilities, then you have the issue of, okay. Got it. Why, yeah, that's where we pull in the new stuff. Got it. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll be more, more, more tricky. So we wanted to kind of say, oh, no, it's restricted at the document level on the root, root document. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking really quick at the uh, policies, permission policies and uh, sandbox attributes for iframe, and they're all related to uh, UI pop-ups and pointers and uh, forms and navigation and stuff like that. So they're all related to the DOM, really. Uh, there, there's a few of one that are obvious, like allow scripts and so on, but they, nothing that would classify APIs and, and functionality the same way as uh, as here. So I, I, I don't think it's a good match. It's an interesting question whether we want something like that, but I don't think we should uh, we should have this at this stage. It's always something we can add later, I think. Can, can you explain that? I didn't, I didn't quite get that. No, if, if we wanted like a way to say create a shadow realm uh, and here are the kind of APIs I want uh, I want only enabled, like. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that in the future. Yes. We can do that in the future. Um, all right. So back, browser states or local storage and things like that. Um. So the reason, the reason this one, I'm wondering if it's something that would be interesting is. Uh, index DB and index DB supports um, uh, structure cloning. Uh, so technically, this would be a way to have efficient uh, access to, and and I think browser is also looking at like adding uh, SQLite natively or things like that. I, I don't remember it exactly, but all the more uh, uh, powerful storage APIs. And which are meant to be efficient access to data. Uh, if you if now you need to go and put that through a, a membrane, and especially as you know we don't have support for passing uh, array buffers through uh, so through the callable boundary. Uh, I'm wondering if that could be interesting to just expose natively. So okay, so, um, so let me let me give you more details about that because I think uh, I feel strong about the browser state. Yeah. Um, and the reason why is because there are, uh, in the in the main window we do have um, uh, events that will allow you to observe changes to the state, mm -hmm. global events that you get through the window and so on. Um, so what that really means is that if you have a a this things are accessible through the shadow realm, then inadvertently it's very difficult to prevent the event to be dispatched inside the uh, the window. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the global object of the shadow realm. Uh, even if you give it a no origin, maybe. But yeah, sorry, it, go ahead. Uh, no, but I mean we don't have a concept of null origin on a uh, on on iframe. But this is this is really interesting. Uh, this is, in my opinion, not a problem of the API itself. It's a problem of where the event, what the event target is. And currently, everything assumes that the global objects should be the event target. Uh, we we have the same we have the same thing for the errors. Where should, we we discuss at some point where should errors be uh, erased, uh, and the default is the in, on the web is the uh, the global object. I think that's a mistake in how the web is <laughs> structured. Yeah, I, I, clearly yes, but, but then the performance wise though, you could still fix this by like making a worker thread. If you're think if you're like trying to. If you're really just trying to get something off the thread, like you can still make a shower realm in a worker, even if you can't make workers in a shower realm. If you're if you're doing it in a worker, you no longer have synchronous access. I know, I know, but I'm saying for like IndexedDB, which was not a synchronous API, anyways. That's what we're talking about. Um, if you're making like a thing that 
loads in index db that's really heavy you know and you want to do it through a shadow realm i think the performance problems of that aren't really relevant because you can always do it in the worker at least that's my opinion I, I or the mean, async api of index db you mean the api is everything is, is is a concern and plus uh worker creating a new worker from a shadow realm is on the list of things uh that are not there for now so yeah, uh, so no, so uh, like, no, no, I said more... creating a worker and then making a shadow realm in it, not making a worker from a shadow realm. I don't. Th that's cr I... instantiating a shadow realm from within a worker. So you have a worker and then it creates a shadow realm. Yeah, I don't think, I don't see how that helps. Um... It's just about separation of concerns for the security of your code. Yeah, but the problem is if you want to code, load the code in the shadow realm. The problem is the the performance of uh, is the performance of putting a membrane between the shadow realm and whatever has direct access to uh, to those performance sensitive APIs. So uh, oh. to, to be more 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 pragmatic about this, so there are two main issues with this: is that uh, number one, we already agree on putting. The, the event target on the global object for shadow realm, the changes are made, they already commit, and that we already merged that. Um, so the uh, global object is an event target. And there's nothing, I, I mean, there, there might be things that you can do when you virtualize the things that you run inside the shadow realm to prevent these events from being triggered. We do that today with iframe, detach iframe, and so on. But it's very, very, very uh, cumbersome, I would say. So if you are adding APIs in general, this is not only browser state, but in general, you have any API that give you access to some information, and this information is pre is is persistent uh, across different um, uh, uh, different globals at this point, um, and you have events that are being dispatched when this information changes over time uh, in multiple places, that seems to me problematic for the shadow realm. Uh, yeah. And that's why I think the the browser state and, and company are things that we probably want to stay away from in the shadow realm. Yeah, I, I mean, everything and any IO API at the end of the day will have some state behind it. Uh, I, I think having um, having having imperative access to global states, in my opinion, is not a problem because you can easily deny that. It to me, it really sounds the problem here. Like the problem here is that you can have uh, reactive access to global state by through the global objects I, I get it the... I, I get it but then but then you you have the issue of okay if i'm going to give them only access to the browser state of uh, apis and i'm not going to dispatch those events that exist today well you're already cutting out a, a feature set that they might be using today they might have a library that works that way and that library doesn't yeah. work inside and they will be like what what like like the <laughs> what we call the the zone of proximal development, like they will be like, okay, well, I have to unlearn that now this thing is global stuff that I use and not I mean, of they, I, I'm sorry, but workers, when workers were introduced, everybody had to learn how to use self instead of window. Uh, I don't think it's a huge stretch to uh, to ask people to use another uh, name uh, to, to register specific events. Um, also, I think those are things that we can add later on. Like yeah. if we, we figure what to do next. Like, okay, well, people really want to have access to IndexedDB or something like that. Well, what are the things we're gonna do? Where are we, are we going to dispatch those events and da 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 da? We can add it later on. Um, similar to what happened with workers where things were added later on in order to make it more complete. Um, no, I, I agree, and and this 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 problem of uh, we're dispatching Evan on the on the global object is in is I, I agree it's uh, a disqualifier for any feature that needs to do this because I I don't want I don't want that to happen. 
uh, I don't want like specific APIs to go and dispatch things on the global object in uh, in Shadow Realm. So if we, it's it's a good reason. I, to I, have a, I would just want to know why you don't want that. Like, is it there a security reason that can't be controlled? Like, because I actually just wondering about why even prevent message passing at all. Like, I, I know it's not like eloquent, but it's safe as long as your whole design of your whole app is okay with the message passing. It's just about breakage of features. That's really all that we're talking about, right? Well, I think it, it makes it, so if we, we allow the, the, this, the dispatch of the events on the global inside the shadow realm, when the main window is changing the index DB entry or whatever it is, or whatever, I don't remember the details. So, but there's a change in the browser state. You will observe that from within the shadow realm uh, that is associated to that window. Uh, if you're doing virtualization, you have to do additional work. If you, you don't care about it, or you don't think about it, then you're leaking information. You might be able to remove the the global well, uh, uh, the global index DB, but then you're still exposing. Are, the are you saying that untrusted shadow realms are a supported use case? Because from my understanding, it's only really the only useful use of it is if you also trust the code in the shadow realm, and you're not if you're not using it for virtualization. I mean, for that use case, which is a lot of people are going to be thinking about, just for just for sole separation of concerns, security, and boundaries between modules. This I feel is, like that alone, so go ahead. This is a contentious point. Uh, browsers don't want to advertise this as a security mechanism. Uh, however, everybody in, in this group knows that it is entirely possible to build a security boundary based on Shadow Realm. Um, the, the main concern here uh, is about the complexity about doing uh, implementing the security boundary. Uh, let, let, let me, let, let it me feels extremely untenable. Let, let me just interject a, a terminology point that seems to yeah. have worked fairly well, which is just use the term integrity. Um, and integrity is understood by security folk as a particular component of security. Um, uh, and, it's, and it is, in fact, um, more precisely, the component of security that we're addressing here. Uh, we're not so much addressing confidentiality, and we're certainly not addressing availability. Uh, but the other thing that's wonderful Got about it. integrity is that outside of security, uh, software engineering understands integrity as having the right benefit for software engineering. So we've we've been we've been doing that, and it has been working. But I, I think I think this is an example of uh, integrity is guaranteed by Shadow Realm. However, this is an API that we wouldn't want to control to uh, provide some level of confidentiality. Uh, and- I'm sorry, which, which is the API in particular? I mean, access to browser state. If you can, if you can access to state that is shared with the main uh, realm, uh, you want to control if, that. If, if it's if it's if you're sharing ability to mutate it, then it's absolutely an integrity issue. Mm. Yes, I get that. But also, I would like to respond that um, there's all the performance on the table that for so many different use cases where, like, I, there's only one possible use case for all the products I have that I want to even consider using it for. And that use case isn't actually possible right now if, if we do, if we block all IO outside of the, uh, the, the sanctioned blessed methods for IO. Um, In my, my specific use case, like I, this is kind of a stretch. I mean, I don't really need shadow realms, but we are going to refactor our code to like do some processing in a worker. And we also, we're going to put a shadow realm in there too. And then we're going to basically be operating on an index DB. That's actually specifically what we're working on. So that's why it was so relevant to me is that we want to react to index DB changes from the main thread. Like we actually want that data to be passed through the spooky, not supposed to be passed through events. Um, and I get that some people don't want that. And, but also I get that adding a flag or a switch here is so much more complexity too. Yeah. The, the problem is if you have those events dispatched on the, on the global object, it's extremely complicated to patch the, uh, you have to be, my understanding and Carrie can correct me, but 
my understanding is that you have to patch all the events listener mechanism to be able to filter. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I did something like that, like, I don't know, like 15 years ago and in a library, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, uh, that it's horrible. I hate that. I never want to make anything like that again, but I don't see any other way that enables the high performance that the message passing like stuff enables. Uh, so it's like, it's like trying to balance between performance and integrity protections that you want configurable. And the interesting stuff, it seems that browser state is a it's a, a area that we have to drill down. The canvas seems to be fine, but does anyone have any issue with canvas? No, we don't have access to yep. DOM. I don't care about uh, accessing. Yeah, you can just send <laughs> pixel rays. Is literally an offload of performance. Uh, so you're in the same thread here. Uh, there is no reason to have access to canvas. The I, I do feel like. A separate issue, this isn't related to realms, but I think workers should have had off screen canvas from day one. <clears throat> Definitely, but uh that's a completely separate thing. <laughs> sorry. Hi everyone. Sorry, like, sorry I don't to, even know if they currently have it. Sorry to interject. I'd love to add a few things like uh on strategies uh for the upcoming TC39 plenary. Uh I think we should go off the record uh for that to discuss strategies. If uh, we don't mind, I think we should use the reminder of the time here. Yeah, that's fine. We probably won't be able to get through the whole list here anyway, so uh, in the remainder of the time. All right. Thank you, everyone. Let's call that assess meeting.